Hi, I'm Charlie Bones and today I'm just going to do a few tutorials on the Red Mother Energy, the Love Goddess Energy if you like, the Blood Mother as I refer to her often. And so on my website of Charlie Bones I sell products and information on the Red Mother and working with this powerful, amazing band of energy in the universe if you like. Now there's loads of Love Goddesses as I'm sure you're aware and lots of Goddesses that are um, like admiration and adoration and beauty. And so when I work with the Red Mother, the Blood Mother Goddess, I see her as an archetypal stream of energy, a massive um, love song to the cosmos in the universe upheld by her energy and within this massive tidal, tidal force of love of beauty and of passion and lust as a path working to the divine in this huge river can manifest different faces of gods and goddesses that also are in alignment with the love song of the cosmos. Therefore, I find when people use my products, the Red Mother products, the contact that I have with people that go on a very deep uh, relationship forming experience with this energy come and tell me different faces of gods I've seen so with utter conviction they've made a relationship with the Red Mother with Aphrodite for example and with uh, the Sacred Whore with Babylon and um, other sex and lust gods so so what we do is we we sink into this energy and we allow the energy the tidal river of what I term the wide Wild Rose Joys Tides. That's the best description I have. It's this very deep fuchsia type pink, very very hot pink if you like, with blood streaming through it. So it's like very red with a very vivid pink background. And often when the God presents or the Goddess is coming or the energy is starting to be tapped and starting to be built, it can be that you can see red in your third eye. That That's the clearest example and also the most consistent feedback I've had from customers of Childer Bones that have used this product is that a lot of people will say I see vivid pink around me now I see red in my third eye have you ever seen red in your third eye when you call this God and and yes I can say I do it's, it's very common very common uh, phenomena when you're dealing with this God and so so why would we even approach the red mother what would that be about and I would have to say that most customers most people that um, contact me regarding the red mother or wanting to know about love or lust as a path working or more passion in their lives tend to want to approach the red mother for enhancing love in their lives to get a lover back to form a new relationship to enhance an existing one to bring more passion into their lives more sex more lust and of course all that's fine, all of that exists for you, all of that can be worked within your own domain and your own life and you can use this energy, you can use the magical tools that I sell or that you could call, there's a lot of information on my website, you don't have to buy from me, you can look on my website for free, see the tutorials on YouTube or, or read the screeds of information I have about um, how to work with the Red Mother and I've even got spells up there that you can use my products with or you could try on your own, I mean, you know, the information's there be shared and so I would say the majority of people tap that energy not to form a relationship with a god uh, with this great goddess not to form a certain um, patronage with this goddess but to literally just want to tap that stream of power that magical power to bring more love into their lives and of course there's a place for that and often people that are not necessarily into magic per se they just want they just want to transform their life and in a small way or in a structured way then then they do that and I guess the most exciting feedback I get I mean I'm always happy when people tell me that they've got more love in their lives or that you know that they feel more joy in their heart and that they've uh, undertaken a more passionate way of approaching their life and they've got a new lover and they've got great sex all of that is fantastic feedback it's lovely and but what really rocks my world is when I hear that people have connected to a god in this massive stream of the red mother's tides the wild rose joys tides and formed a relationship and um, are actually having the goddess contact 
and feeling that their whole world is opening up now, that their whole heart's opening up, you know, as wide as their legs. And um, everything's as exciting and beautiful and joyous and life's exciting. And, and what they're actually doing is they're going forth in life with passionate desire. And of course, that kind of feedback, that delights me more than anything it delights me and so why would we approach the red mother apart from wanting more love in our lives which is very important of course these these needs and desires are important and they should not be shunned and overlooked because the happier we are in life with our basic needs met and then the you know the desires met and then our goals and then joyous expansion the more that we develop the more that we desire the more that we have stuff fulfilled the happier we are and the more that life is sacred to us and the more that we can be of assistance to other people should we choose to even if it's just smiling at someone at a bus stop and cheering someone up for no other reason than you can because you've got enough kindness in your heart um, so so why would people go there okay so if you wanted to form a relationship with a god I would say do not um, think that necessarily a love goddess is a win-win it's an easy thing it's easier than say working with other gods that are darker or stronger or more into martial arts or more into uh, warfare I would say that is the biggest misunderstanding of love goddesses possibly on the planet I um, yeah, I, I find that if you look at um, things in bookshops on magic and introduction to magic, the biggest misunderstanding I think that's portrayed out there is that love goddesses in some way are easier to connect with or they're safer. And I would say, of course, they're safe, but um, it's a misrepresentation of the power. So um, we, we go to a god like a love goddess um, because we may have a certain um, desire to feel more love or we may actually be naturally... Um, propel to go to a certain god because we've dreamt about that goddess, we've dreamt about Aphrodite or we've felt a really strong connection for example to her servitors in the past or some vivid experience and, and so we go there because we don't know why but we're drawn most to there or that god's visited us and so therefore we feel that we'd like to know more about that god and so we go there but, but I say we go there not because necessarily we think they're easier because love goddesses with this misunderstanding if I ever get to the point and I'm going to try to now so thank goodness for that um, love goddesses are, are an energy that can take us to the very edges of our heart when they want us to joyously expand and we've had a life of disappointment or broken hearts that aren't mended yet or um, we've been thinking small and limited about what life, how much love life has to offer us then my goodness, you could be alarmed if you contact the power of a love goddess and get taken in a journey that's authentic to you with the power of that love goddess and you're riding the wave of her magic and you're taken to the very edges of your heart where disappointment and desolation lay because you haven't been able to go beyond that because the healing that you need or the, the acceptance that you need or some part of the past that you need to leave behind that no longer serves you wow we're talking about a powerful goddess here we're not talking her wrapping you in cotton wool we're talking about love and love when it's missing hurts like hell so when we ride the power of a love goddess, she is everything we ever desired, everything we could ever anticipate, need, require to thrive, to flourish, to bloom, to become a soft peach that's just about to be bitten into with the succulent nature of our lives. And she is everything when we haven't got there, when we've been denied it, when we've been shunned with unrequited love, dumped, split up, divorced, or when we have not believed that we were worthy enough to have that, our own succulent nature at its full ripeness, just as it's about to go on the tree, that is her energy, that is her time, that is her season, that is the point in her, in our lives where with the Red Mother you're always travelling, you're always travelling to that absolute point on the bow of the tree where life will bite into you and you fall and you're succulent and juicy and ripe and you have bloomed and you have flourished at the peak of your potential that is where the red mother takes us that is why she is so passionate so wild and so loving and so powerful so everything up to this point that you believe in your mind has denied you or that you believe in your beliefs or past experiences or echoes or whatever your belief system is 
whatever she, whatever you believe is denied you up to now, trust me, when love goddesses flood your life, it's not necessarily cotton wool wrapping in honey. It is effective and it is a powerful path working to the divine. I say it on my website all the time. The Red Mother is not just a goddess. It is not just a tidal stream of magic to work for, for love and lust. That is limiting this god's power. This goddess's power is mighty. And if you only want to tap her for a relationship or only want to tap her because you want to feel more sexy, then fair enough. But I think it is seeing the god in a very small, small way because this is life changing stuff this is transformation this is taking you to intimacy this is the re relating God that takes us to how we relate to everything in the cosmos how we relate to the pot plant the neighbors you know the guy at the bus stop how we relate to our people at work how we relate to our lovers our husbands our wives our children our pets everything now that's a massive that can be just you know you can roll it off the tongue and think it's not much if you've got something inside you that could be opened in some way, something like a Pandora's box, something where you know that any relationship with you, with intimacy, that you try and shield because you're trying to, you know, protect yourself and you may not even know what it is because, you know, maybe life bumped you when you were small and you made a decision and you continued and you didn't know. And all of this is okay. I'm not saying anyone's wrong. I'm just saying when you expose yourself to an energy, never underestimate the power of a love goddess. Never underestimate the power of a love goddess because she is everything you can conceive and more. She is every fairy tale that you ever saw and more. And she can open us and challenge us and open us and keep opening us. And it can hurt. It can make you feel vulnerable and open and wide open and oh my goodness, I thought I was tapping a love stream and now I feel like I'm like this and there's pain. There's, there's all sorts of things popping in me. And what that can be is like the biggest, most beautiful flushing of your blood, if you like, on a deep blood level about your relationships with love and intimacy. And if we think of the word intimacy, intimacy, sometimes that's the hardest thing for us to do as humans, is see who we are and who we are in relation to anything outside ourselves and, and ultimately who we are to this goddess. So that's a brief introduction. I'm going to do some tutorials um, on, on the Red Mother particularly and her stream, how we work with her magically, what products I sell and how we call her and what does that even mean. And so I just wanted to give you a brief synopsis of my experience with Love Goddesses and, and also to um, as a brief introduction. So I hope that's enough for now and um, I'll follow up with other tutorials. Thanks.